Okay. Uh, last time we've studied the vector addition, like u plus v or scalar multiplication addition. Ku, this is a scalar multiplication and or what substitution uh, subtraction u minus v so <clears throat> here the multipli multiplication is a product between real number and vector but today we'll study the dot product this dot product is a product between two vectors with the same side uh, okay, here is the definition of the dot product. Dot product, if this we call we call it dot product because there is a dot notation between two vectors u and v. If two vectors are given like u1, u2, u3, and v1, v2, v3, then the dot product between two vectors can be expressed like sum of u1, v1, u2, v2, and u3, v3. Uh, this is very simple notation. For example, if you consider uh, u as one, two, three, and v as four, five, six, then the dot product between two vectors is one, four, two, five, three, six, and this is four. Yeah. So the calculation between two that products of two between two vectors is not very complicated. So this is the definition. Okay, here are some examples. As I said, uh, we should multiply same components like this. This is minus six, minus four, plus three, and it should be minus seven. And this is the vector expressed by the by a linear combination of standard unit vectors as i said recall the this i vector is one zero zero and j vector is zero one zero and k vector is zero zero one and if this vector v is given as v1 v2 v3 then the linear combination expression of this V is V1i, V2j plus V3k. So this implies the vector one over two, three, and one. And this vector is four minus one and two. <clears throat> Again, we use the definition of that product to get two minus three plus two, and this is one. And so far, this is a, a dot product between three dimensional vectors, but we can also define the dot product between two, two dimensional vectors. Since we obtain two dimensional vector by dropping the third term u1, u2, and v1, v2, zero, v1, v2. So this is same as the inner product between, between u1, u2, u3. And instead of u3, we use zero, v1, v2, zero. So we have the we have a similar formula of the dot product. Okay, here is some properties of the dot product. Here, in this case, u dot v is u1 v1, u2 v2 plus u3 v3, and we can change the order of u and v because for the real number we can change them. So we have v1, u1, v2, u2, v3, u3. Then this implies 
v dot u. So we can change the order of u and v. Similarly, we can also prove these. We can we can also prove these identities. Uh, yeah, it is very similar rule. And actually, property five is very simple because the inner product between zero vector and u is zero, 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 and u1, u2, u3, and it should be zero plus zero plus zero, and it should be zero. And I think the fourth identity is the most important identity for the dot product, because sometimes we, <coughs> we define the dot product by the ranks of the vector. The right, si right hand side of this identity is expressed by the ranks of vector. And so from this identity, we can get the, we can define the inner product from the length of the vector. Uh, actually, we can prove this identity, bar, identity very easily. The ranks of this vector u is u1 square, u2 square, plus u3 square. And inner product between u dot u is uh, u1, u2, u3 dot u1, u2, u3. So we get u1 square, u2 square, u3 square. And this is the square of the ranks of this vector. Now let me express, let, let me explain how to calculate, uh, how to define the dot product from the length of the vector. Uh, if you only want to assume this identity, then we have u in, okay. Here we have, we only have u dot u is the ranks square of ranks of this vector. Then we assume we calculate u plus v dot u plus v. Then since this identity holds for any vector u, we also have, we can, we substitute uh, no, we substitute u plus v into this vector u to get here the ranks of sum of vector u plus v. And we have, we can express this u plus v plus v dot u plus v. Here we use this identity, this third identity, because uh, here is a sum, sum in here. So we decompose this u and v into these two terms. Again, we get, we get, u dot u plus u dot v plus v dot u plus v dot v. Then since u dot u is the square of the ranks of u, we have u square plus here is v square. And since u dot v and v dot u, are, are the same quantity, we get plus two u dot v. So we get two u dot v is u plus v length square minus u square minus length of v square. So we can define the inner product between u and v by this formula. Maybe we'll use similar identity to, to prove some identity for the of the dot product. 
Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So I want to express, I want to explain. There is some relation between the dot product and the length of the vector. Any question? No? Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is the main theorem. Yeah. Pardon? I will post this lecture notes. Yeah. Okay. This is the most important theorem of the dot product. <clears throat> Let me explain this theorem by uh, figure. Here is the vector u and vector v. And the angle between these two vectors is theta. Then there is the, the relation between u, v, and theta is this. We can express the uh, cosine theta by u and v. Okay, let me prove this identity. So our goal is u dot v equal norm of u, norm of v times cosine theta. First, we draw a figure here, u and v. There is the origin and here is theta. <clears throat> then we know that this vector is u minus v. This vector is u minus v. Recall the cos row of cosine, row of cosines. If this triangle A, B, C, and here is the ranks A and B and ranks C, and this angle is theta, then the row of cosine can be expressed by C square equal A square plus B square minus two AB cosine theta. We apply this row, row of cosines into uh, this vector form. First, the ranks of this vector u should be, okay, we can just write down like this form. And the ranks up here is ranks of v. And the ranks of this side is ranks of u minus v. So we apply the row of cosine to get uh, Rank square of u minus v is u square plus v square minus two u v cosine theta. <clears throat> Since the left side, left hand side, is the inner product between two same vectors u minus v. Then we can express by u dot, uh, sorry. I should not use that notation. u dot u minus v minus v dot u minus v. And this is u dot u minus u dot v minus v dot u plus v dot v. So u dot u is the rank square of u. And this is minus two u dot v. And this is norm square, rank square of vector v. So we compare. Right, right hand side and the uh, uh, and this side, we compare these two sides to get minus two ranks of u ranks of v cosine theta is minus two u 
that v. Finally, we drop this to minus two to get u dot v equal ranks of u and ranks of v and cosine theta. Okay, any question? Okay, so to obtain this formula for that product, we use the we use the row of cosines. Okay, here are some examples. If u equal v, then u dot u equal norm of u, norm of u cosine theta. We don't know the theta, but uh, and this is non-zero vector. Then the left hand side is rank square, and here is rank square cosine theta. So here we have cosine theta equal one. If cosine theta is one, then theta should be zero. Since since two vectors are equal, the angle between u and u should be zero. So this is the consistent result. And also, if you put u is minus v, of course, it's non-zero vector. If, not, if zero vector is given, then we cannot uh, measure the angle between two vectors. So we assumed the non-zero vectors. In this case, we have u dot minus u equal ranks of u, ranks of minus u, and cosine theta. Then this is minus u dot u, and this is ranks square cosine theta. So finally, we have this relation, and we can conclude that cosine theta should be minus one. <clears throat> if cosine theta is minus one, then theta should be pi. So since we assume u equal minus v, that means here is u and here is v and this is minus u. Since the angle between these two vectors is pi, this is also, uh, the, also a consistent result. Okay, any question on this example? No? Okay, <clears throat> here is the proof, slice of this proof, but we've already covered it. Okay, <clears throat> and record the previous formula, u dot v equal u v cosine theta. We simply divide both term by ranks of u and ranks of v to get this formula. So we can express, so, so we can calculate the cosine theta where the cosine, uh, where the theta is the angle between two vector by the <coughs> formula of uh, uh, formula of expression of u and v. So if you know two vectors, then we can calculate the cosine cosine of the between angles. That means, uh, for example, here we use uh, okay. We consider there is. 0, 0.0, this is the zero vector, and here is 2,0, and here is 1,3. Since both or all of side of this triangle is two, we can easily notice that the angle between, uh, ang angle between here should be 60 degrees or pi over three. <coughs> so we substitute here, we, we, we set u as one and square root and v as two zero, then cosine theta should be u dot v over norm of u and norm of v. Since the norm of u and v are both two, we get two times two, 
and the inner product between u and v is one, two plus zero three times zero. So we have two over four and it's one over two. Since cosine theta is one over two, we can easily get theta is pi over three or 60 degree. Okay, this is the example. So if you know two vectors, then we can calculate the angle between these two vectors. Okay, any question? No? Okay, here is some <coughs> example. <coughs> now let me calculate the cosine theta, where theta is defined in here. Uh, first, we set two vectors. U, vector U, starts from C and finish at A. Then the expression of U should be minus five comma minus two. And here, the vector V starts at C and finishes at B. The, then also the coordinate expression of V is minus two comma three. So we set two vectors, and now we want to calculate the angle between these two vectors. Then we use the previous formula, u dot v over norm of u, norm of v. Uh, we know that the inner product between two vectors is 10 minus six. And the length of vector u is zero five two, 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 two times uh, square three square. So we get four over square root of uh, 29 times 13. Since we know the cosine, cosine theta, we can calculate theta by uh, calculator. Okay, any question? Uh, you can use both expression. You can use both expression. Oh, okay. Uh, the ranks of this side is, of course, two because only the x axis is different. And we, since this vector is one comma square root of three. So the norm can be calculated by one square and square of square of three and similar. Okay. okay. And now let me explain about orthogonal vectors, orthogonal vectors. Orthogonal is a similar meaning to the uh, perpendicular. That means the angle between two vectors. If, if the angle between two vectors is pi over two, then we call that two vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal. So since the, from this formula, if non-zero vector u and v are given, it should be zero if theta is pi over two. Also, converse is true. Uh, yeah, okay. So if the dot product between two vectors is zero, then cosine theta should be zero and theta should be pi over two. So, so we have this definition. <clears throat> the vectors u and v are orthogonal if and only if u dot v is zero. Actually, for the non-zero vector, we cannot determine the direction of the vector, but from the, this definition, we have this remark. For any, uh, for the zero vector is orthogonal to all vectors. Since the dot product between zero vector and any vector should be zero, we can say that 
any vector is orthogonal to the zero vector. Okay. Okay, let me tell you some examples. Actually, we learned these standard unit vectors. We can easily get the inner product between two different uh, standard unit vector should be zero. I dot J should be zero, J dot K also zero, and K dot I is also zero. Okay, now let me explain about the projections of vectors. <clears throat> Here, the vector projection of U onto non zero vector V is the vector PR. Here is the vector U, and here is vector V. The projection of vector u onto the non-zero vector v. If if v is zero vector, then we cannot uh, project the vector vector. So we only consider non-zero vector v. However, you can be this vector u can be a zero vector. <clears throat> so determined by dropping perpendicular from q to the line ps. So we can find this point R by projecting the point Q to the line PS. And the notation of this vector is pro projection of U to V. Projection of U to onto V, onto V. This is the, this is the notation of the vector projection. <laughs> and also record that We call that um, projection, projection of U onto V only depends on the direction of V. That means projection of U onto V is projection of u onto kv for any non-zero real number k. Can you understand? Since the ranks of v doesn't matter for the projection, only direction is important. Direction of v is important. Also this k can be negative because we only project the vector onto the line, not a directed line. So, the, so, so only the direction of v is important. Okay. Here is the meaning of the projection. <clears throat> here, uh, here is the force U and the effective force for the horizontal direction should be projection of U onto V, onto V. This is the effective force. <clears throat> okay, now let me explain, let me, let me introduce how to calculate the projection the formula of the projection, projection of vectors. <clears throat> we consider two cases. Uh, if theta between U and V is acute angle, that means is the angle is less than pi over two, then the projection and the ranks of projection should be no, uh, ranks of U times cosine theta. Mm, just we use the definition of the trigonometric function. <clears throat> And here, and here, if theta is obtuse, then I mean it is larger than uh, pi over two, then the ranks should be expressed by this form. <clears throat> Actually, this length is positive because uh, if theta is between in pi over two and pi, then cosine theta should be negative. So since cosine theta is negative, this minus ranks of u times cosine theta should be positive, okay? For each case, for each case, uh, in, the, in, the, 
last lecture, I said that these two vectors are unit vectors that has the direction, uh, the same direction with the vector V because uh, length of V is positive and uh, yeah, yeah, okay then. <clears throat> okay, so we multiply V over length of V to here to get uh, U cosine theta times V over length of V. Then this is cosine theta and V. And similarly, if you put, if you multiply minus V over length of V to here, then we also get this form. Then we know that both case projection of vector U onto V carries the length of the projected vector. And this is the direction of projected vector. So here we use cosine theta equal u dot v over ranks of u, ranks of v. Then we can get this expression and finally we got this expression. So actually you don't have to remember all of this process. We can just remember the formula here. Projection of vector u onto vector v is u dot v over normal v square times v. Okay. Okay, so the, <coughs> we define the projection, a vector projection and the scalar component by this formula. Here is the projection of u onto the vector, onto a vector v as I explained. And we also define the scalar component of u in the direction of v. Since this vector projection is expressed by u dot v over norm of v times vector v over norm of uh, ranks of vector v, this is the unit vector. And this is the ranks of the projection. So we define these ranks of projection like here, but, uh, but, the, but this length of projection can be minus if, if, if theta in pi over two to pi, then scalar component of U onto V can be negative. It can be negative. Okay, so remark that scalar component can be a negative value. Okay, here is some <coughs> examples, simple examples. Yep. So for the vector projection or vector result, are your calculations Yes, vector projection is vector. Yes, it's scalar. Okay, here we only we just use the formula for the projection and scalar component to get projection of vector u onto v is u dot v over normal v square v to get uh, since the inner product between two vectors is six minus six minus four and norm square of uh, rank square of V is one plus minus two square plus minus two square. And this vector is one minus two and minus two. So we get minus four over nine, one minus two minus two. It's the projection of vector U onto the onto vector V. <clears throat> also scalar component is by the formula u dot v over ranks of vector v is six minus six minus four square root of one plus minus two square minus two square. So we get minus four over 
three. So this is the answer. So this is how to use the formula for projection vector, projection vector and scalar component. Any question? Okay, now let me introduce some physical object. It is the work. <clears throat> the work done by constant force F acting through a displacement D is performed by the comp component of F in direction D. So we assume the displa displacement is this vector D and the constant force is given by this F and the angle between F and D is theta. Here's the definition, the work, definition of work is a scalar component of F in, direction, in the direction of D. That means uh, only, we only consider the parallel component of F to D, that's the, this direction and the ranks of this vector projection should be F cosine theta. <clears throat> So the expression is F cosine theta times ranks of D. So this D, and finally we use the formula for the dot product to get that's the F dot D. The work can be calculated by inner product between constant force times displacement. Okay, this is the final example. Uh, so, so, so here is the definition of the work. So we define the work by the inner product between force and displacement. <clears throat> by this definition, we can solve this problem. A wagon is pulled a uh, distance of three meters or, or on horizontal path. So the wagon is pulled by three meters and this is the displacement vector and constant force 40 Newton. And we as here, as the assumption is the handle of wagon is held at angle of six, 60 degree of the horizontal. That means the angle is 60 degree and here's F and the force, <coughs> force is 40 Newton. So we can calculate the inner product between two, between force and displacement by the ranks of uh, force and this displacement cosine theta and we know this theta is 60 degree so we get 40 newton times three meter times one over two get uh, 60 newton meter and since newton meter is a joule so we can obtain the total work for this example any question? Okay, then we can finish from now. And we have a quiz next in the next lecture. So don't be late. Okay, then see you Wednesday. Yeah. Just under